Welcome to Mighty Married Moms. Join us at our kitchen table twice a week as the Mighty Married Moms, Debbie, Linda, Wendy, invite spectacular guests to weigh in on staying sexy, vibrant, and healthy, building marriages with soul-satisfying connection, raising happy, healthy, successful kids. Conversations with Mighty Married Moms will bring you closer to the life you really want. Episode 95. Today's show is brought to you by Deborah C. Owen, Family and Life Coach at YouCanRaiseGreatKids.com. If you are tired of worrying about the choices your kid is making or tired of the stress of constantly arguing with your kids or them arguing with each other, then don't wait until you are truly desperate. Get the help you and your family need and deserve today. Connect with your kids with calm compassion. Call Deborah Owen at 978-835-4354. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Mighty Married Moms. Today, we have the distinct privilege of speaking with Dr. Amanda Flowers. Dr. Flowers received her doctorate degree in clinical psychology with an emphasis on diverse and underserved populations. She's received over 30 scholarly awards while touching children and adults from all walks of life through her work at mental health and drug treatment centers, correctional facilities, hospitals, veterans organizations, research institutes, academic settings, business agencies, and churches. That's quite a resume. Yes. I guess so. um, she grew up in rural southeastern Ohio where she developed a passion to work with individuals suffering from mental health barriers to research factors that lead to their resiliency and to advocate for interventions that change their social challenges. Dr. Flowers has received numerous prestigious research grants and is the producer and host of Let's Talk About Health, where I was privileged to be a guest recently, which airs every Saturday at 10 a.m. on 1580, among other media appearances. And her website is dramandaflowers.wordpress.com. And Amanda, we are thrilled to have you here today. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. It's exciting. Yeah. yeah. You've got quite a great resume, all kinds of things that you've got in your background and your past and clearly have led you on your journey yeah. to where you are today. We would totally. love to hear in just like a minute or two, you know, what was your journey? How did you get to this position of being a, a doctor of clinical psychology? Well, um, it started out just as a child. I grew up in a rural community, and, you know, sometimes rural communities um, are plagued with some poverty. And, and growing up, too, seeing the hospitals, a lot of times when people would get sick, they would have to travel a couple of hours to get to the good hospitals. So just seeing things like that, um, I always thought, wow, I want to help people, but I want to be closer to help them so they don't have to travel so far. And then also just seeing in my family and how everyone bonded and came together. My mother um, was just a very spiritual person. You know, I had a spiritual family. Mm -hmm. And then my father um, was a Marine in Vietnam. So although at the time I didn't realize it, he suffered from post-traumatic stress. Mm -hmm. And this kind of, you know, troubled, I mean, he did really well, um, especially compared to some that I've seen, but it just bothered him all of his life for the things that he went through. And then, um, but my mom, you know, stood by him. They, 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 they were together all the time. He ended up passing away from lung cancer related to Agent Orange, but it was beautiful because before he passed away, he finally came at peace with everything. Good. And just so all of it kind of combined is what brought me together to want to help other people, you know, heal socially, you know, psychologically, spiritually, just kind of blend it all together to be comfortable. It's good to live in peace and comfort. Wow. Yes, <laughs> right. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, what? Let's dive right into some of these questions here. Um, that's amazing. <laughs> I mean, that's an incredible story, and I know that you have a lot to share on some of these issues, and we have a lot we want to ask you. So we're just going to dive in. Um, in your practice, you work with mothers who are dealing with a lot of stress and depression because they're taking care of their children. They may also be taking care of their parents. Um, that's stressful. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what, what are some recommendations you have for any parent, whether a mother or a father, to avoid this kind of caretaker um, depression or burnout or stress? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, it's interesting. One of the all too silent health crisis is caregiver depression. About 20% of family caregivers, whether it's caring for just immediate family 
or caring for even extended family members if there's parents that are ill or even grandparents, aunts, uncles. 20% um, of family caregivers suffer from depression and it's just in an effort to provide the best possible care for family members, um, caregivers often sacrifice their own physical and emotional needs. And so anytime a caregiver starts to feel you know, their eating habits start to change, sleeping habits change, if they're feeling, you know, tired a lot of the time or easily agitated or, you know, anxious or even irritable, um, or especially if there's, you know, thoughts of death or suicide and sometimes even headaches and digestive pains and things like that, you, that's the first step to go see someone. Um, a lot of times we wait until things get to a really severe state before we go to see someone. But if your physical symptoms are starting to change, that's one of the things. And then two, with all of the, the stress, set realistic goals. Um, and sometimes we take on too much, not realizing we take on too much, but just because that's what needs done. But sometimes if we just look at everything we have to do, break it down into um, larger tasks in the smaller ones, set some priorities. And sometimes, you know, everything's not going to get done. So just do the things that have to get done that day if you're not feeling well and save the other things, you know, to the next day. Being around positive people and confiding in someone, let your family and friends help you. A lot of times we don't like to ask for help, so we need to let people help us. And then make sure we're engaged in activities that make us feel better, whether it's recreational activities, whether we join classes or support groups. And remembering, you know, keeping a positive attitude and, and self-help. If we have negative thinking, replace it with the positive thinking. Okay, so we're done. I mean, that that was <laughs> that was that was it. You know, because we gave our audience some real key takeaways, Great. and you just went through them right in a row. Okay, set smaller, more achievable goals. Choose to hang around with positive people so you can have a positive attitude. Uh, let people help you, and uh, do activities that make you feel good. Mm -hmm. I mean. That's well, wonderful. Why is it so hard for us to let people help us? Mm -hmm. Yeah, do you have any insights? <laughs> well, I think a lot of, we want to be superheroes. Yeah. And oh. a lot of times we don't want to bother other people, especially as women. I mean, mm -hmm. men are the same way too. But especially as women, we feel like we don't want to place other tasks on other people, especially if they look like they're busy people. So a lot of times we want to be superheroes and we, um, we take on a lot of obligations to do it ourselves. We look at other people and realize they're busy too and we don't want to overburden them. We would rather take on the brunt of, of issues ourselves. And then sometimes I think um, in part of wanting to be a superhero, especially as a mother, we still go into some atmospheres, like sometimes work things aren't, especially if you're in a business atmosphere, they're not balanced with men and women, you know, right, equal rights and things. So I think sometimes mothers will make up for that at home. And, um, you know, just kind of the combination of that, not wanting to overburden people and just feeling like, hey, we can tackle the world. But we don't stop until we're sick. <laughs> yeah. I met with a colleague last week. I, I work with people um, in, in relationships. And I met with a gentleman who specifically worked with other men in, in relationship realm. Mm -hmm. And he, he said one of his key messages to the guys is if all of us learned how to ask for help, 90% of the world's problems would go away. Mm -hmm. Because all of us in this on this screen right now, people listening, men, women, whatever, we know that if a good friend or somebody that we cared about called and said, oh my goodness, something horrific just happened, we know that we would drop things and go, oh, excuse me, I got to go. Yes. Th that, that drive to go help somebody is very, very present. Yes. Most people with some modicum of mental health. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what, what is it that makes us think that I know I would go help Linda, but Linda probably wouldn't go help me. I mean, that's just weird thinking. So if we learn how to ask for help mm -hmm. and trust that most people are going to come through on some level, you know, how, you know, a lot of, a lot of volume on a lot of uh, distress would be, would be turned down. Yes. I, 
It made great sense to me. <laughs> yes, absolutely. You know, and I was talking to someone the other day about faith, too. Just even having faith and believing great things will happen for you sometimes. It's so much easier for us to believe that for other people than it is for us to believe that for ourselves at times. It is, absolutely. Absolutely. Where does that come from? It's, you know, um, I, I think just sometimes we don't realize we have low self-esteem and a lot of times, you know, it, and it depends on each person. Sometimes people's backgrounds, especially if children grew up with different types of trauma as adults, it's hard for us to believe that, you know, good things can help for us, help us. Sometimes even just adults, if we are stressed out, we could have had the, the perfect upbringing and the perfect life. But if we are stressed out, it distorts our thinking. It distorts so, our thinking. Mm -hmm. And even if we, even just a little, you know, a lot of people don't realize when we become depressed, that's kind of on a continuum. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people look at it like you have to be clinically depressed with a diagnosis for it to impact you. But sometimes if it goes just a little to the left or a little to the right, and even with grief and things, um, that will just throw you off. So your thinking is, is a little off kilter. So sometimes it's just that the stress will make us not think clearly. Yeah, and who wants to let it go go on for so long that you're clinically diagnosed, right? Yeah. I mean, we don't want to let it go on that long. Let's fix it, stop it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think where a lot of people run into problems is you're busy as it is. So then we don't take time to 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 take care of ourselves or time to go see a doctor until we're at the point we just have no other choice. Mm -hmm. And you know what, Amanda, that goes right into the next question, which is, you know, we have rushing rushing around to to drive children places and we have meetings that we go to either for work or for community organizations. We prepare our meals and doing grocery shopping and cleaning the house. And, <laughs> and, yeah. I mean, and, and to be fair, fathers have their list of things that they do and, and couples work out, you know, which ones the wife is going to do and which ones mm -hmm. I'm going to do. And hopefully they at least balance a little bit. Um, so what advice do you have for women and men who are trying to balance all of these different responsibilities yeah and still have fun and be and be happy. Yeah, so I have to giggle as I do this because everyone laughs laughs at me. Um, make a schedule for everything. Mm -hmm. And I and you know nowadays there we can put schedules on our phones, on our iPads, we can use the old fashioned calendar or have a planner. But whatever it is, I tell people a lot of times color code it and start from the time you wake up in the morning until you go to bed at night, but you know, all the things that have to do with, with, you know, just taking care of the house, maybe color code them in purple. And if it has to do with the children, color code them in green. If it has to do with work, make them blue and kind of it, it just adding the color makes it easy to, to gaze at it and see what you're going to do. And I tell people to have your whole family on a schedule. And we know just even from raising babies, we need to put babies on a schedule immediately to get them balanced. But we can carry that on out through our lives. And not that we're telling everyone what to do all the time, but if people, you know, have appointments, put all their appointments on there. Um, make sure that, you know, schedule in the homework time. Ha have that in a schedule. You know, even um, your bills. Put your bills in the schedule, which days you're going to pay them and um, don't forget to schedule in time for things that you enjoy. If you like visiting friends or going to dinner or a movie, schedule those things in as well. And then I tell people, too, it's really important for if you're taking care of everybody else, you have to prioritize yourself because you will not have the energy to take care of everyone else if you have no energy. So even if that means putting cooking on the schedule just to make sure, you know, a lot of times we forget little things like that and then it's like, oh no, I got to squeeze in cooking here somewhere. <laughs> so even if you schedule out the time for that um, and schedule out time for exercise and then, you know, as we have place everything on to-do lists, set boundaries and limitations and remember, you know, everyone in the family works together. So bounce off from each other. Partners work together. You know, you're in this together. And then one of the big things that I see with people is you have to know when to turn off work. 
a lot of people bring work That's home. So hard to do. <laughs> yes, yes. And a lot of people bring it home with them, and then others, um, you know, they physically have to do what others mentally bring it home with them, but no one to shut it off. And even if you have to do work at home, schedule in your time that you're going to spend with your children, your time you're going to spend with your husband, and have that, even if it's the last thing before you go to sleep, first thing when you get up in the mornings. And then just one other thing I want to add in there, talk to your employers and your supervisors. If expectations at work are too much, um, let them know and talk to them about it. And, you know, there's different employee assistant programs that we don't think of that sometimes, uh, you know, will be short-term counseling or referrals. You know, there's family medical leave if you have an emergency. Sometimes employers, because most people are good people. We have some employers that might not be so nice, but most people are good people. So they may be able to at least sometimes work in some flex time with you or telecommuting from home or even job sharing responsibilities. And a lot of times we forget to talk to the employer, but that's a really good place to start with balance as well. Right. If you don't ask, it's a no anyway. It's a no. Yeah. 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 That's really interesting that you bring that up because I think that People think, oh, you you can't ask. Mm. I'm not worthy of asking. I'm only the employee. Yes. Self-esteem thing, right? I think you're right. Most employers, most people are good people. Yeah. And if you went and said, I could, I really need this. Can, how can we be creative and work this in for me to make a big difference? And mm -hmm. this is why mm -hmm. I'm sure most employers would do it. I mean, yeah. most people are doing that now. So I think right. it's, it's the current climate as well. Mm -hmm. And I also think this is great. Um, it's great to hear you say that. Uh, you know, scheduling everything in. What a great thing to teach your kids, right? Yes. Right. Yes. They always say, if you if you don't know where you're going, you'll surely get there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> If you don't know what's important, the most important things you want to have happen in your day, um, if you don't plan that out, they may not happen. That's what happens, right? And the day goes by, a week goes by, a month goes by, and, and you start to feel more chaotic and more out of control. And, yes. Um, you know, so these are really great uh great strategies, right. writing everything down. And I would schedule <laughs> big blocks of rest. If yes. I was taking a day schedule, uh, maybe not big, but I would definitely, I've heard that tell, is that you need to block out and say, mm -hmm. you know, and if, and if, especially if it's a family calendar, this green yes. square right here, that's Wendy time. Yes. Never, you know what I mean? And 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 it's just as um, inviolate as if I was saying it's homework time or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, and stick to it when you block it out too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Stick to it. That's true. That's true. <laughs> uh, one of the things that I know that's important that you we've spoken of is that uh, how couples with their various hats again, you know, mm -hmm. everybody going in six directions and they've got kids, and every year, oh, there's more things to do, more soccer games, more responsibilities, more extracurricular. How does that couple? put themselves on the agenda to continue to build that bond and, and, and maintain that bond, that loving bond, because those kids eventually will leave the home and they'll be, they'll be there by themselves together. So how do, how do couples, do you have any suggestions on that when things get chaotic? Yeah, so first of all, couples have to make sure that they have time to focus on one another every day. Um, and it, it just set out, again, the scheduling that block of time. And that block of time may be just 15 minutes that I know if nothing else, we're going to have this 15 minutes before dinner or this 15 minutes after the kids go to bed to always share heart to heart and face to face mm -hmm. what happened in their day. And while the kids are at school, if there's a way to schedule lunch together, you know, once a week even, and put this on the calendar and make that a definite appointment. It's something that cannot, you know, be broken. And cultivate common interest. A lot of times spouses have different hobbies, but find something that you enjoy doing together. And, you know, it could be um, just as small as you know, reading, finding a book that you like and reading your book together and, you know, just discussing the book. And then I always tell people, 
if you're reading a book that has a movie to go with it, after you talk about the book, watch the movie together and then compare them. And um, love letters, writing love letters to one another and, and reading them and even, you know, incorporating them in a journal or a wooden box, something to look back on later. Mm -hmm. And one key thing that all couples should do is have a regular date night. And then some, some say, how do I get out at night because I have my children? Well. If you have a relative nearby, that's helpful. But if not, find friends. Swap babysittings with friends. Maybe one night they'll keep your children and you know, and, and you can switch back and forth. But one thing that people don't think about is we can sometimes be creative when the children are actually in the house. And we think, oh, we have to be creative when they're asleep, but set them down, have them watch a movie, have them do something and, and be creative, set up your own dinner and then, you know, in a different room or something special that you're doing that the kids are, are watching what they're watching and they could care less of what's going on. And sometimes we can get away with things like that. Um, and one of the things I tell people, especially if they're spiritual people, you know, read your spiritual books together, pray together, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, this really brings people together for, for bonding as well. And then, of course, we always know if you can get away for weekend vacations and things like that, you know, do those as well when you can, can schedule them. A lot of the times there's, you know, hotels or bed and breakfast, even campsites and stuff close to where you live. So that doesn't mean you have to travel far away, but just something that you can get a night or two away when your friends will, will help you watch your kids. Yeah, and that's I, a, oh, sorry. <laughs> the scheduling thing, you put that on the calendar a weekend away in November, I'll be mm -hmm. looking at my calendar and can't wait. <laughs> <out in> the <laughs> minute. Even that little mini vacation every day of thinking about the vacation. Yeah. Yes. It's really kind of a neat thing to do. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was just going to say I just really love all of these um, they're very practical, right? Practical totally. um, suggestions that you're giving. They're nothing like that is going to take this massive amount of energy, mm -hmm. effort to do. But as they say with the baseball player, right? If you if you hit m one more out of ten, right, your batting average goes up a smidgen. You know, you can be in the Hall of Fame or um, you know, yes, whatever <laughs> it is, right? Um, so in a relationship, just that little extra. The world of difference. Totally. Totally. Yes. And I think it's so easy for us to overthink things. When it comes to like this, we sometimes we just think too deeply and overthink them, especially if we're women. We we love to think about stuff like this too. And you know, just keep it keep it really simple and simplistic and you know, I mean, and sometimes making, you know, putting a lot of planning and thought and scheduling into it, it it's fun, but sometimes it's just the, the small things that we do that can just make the world of a difference and, and take a lot of the stress and, and, you know, the hectic off from our day. I yeah. found three hours in a day. Wow. I found them. How? I haven't done it yet, so I'm lying a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I got this newsletter from a guy named Brendan Bouchard the other day, and other people may know that name. And he said he has taken a new habit. He takes off 90 minutes of screen time before bed, no screen, for a full 90 minutes before he hits the sack. Mm -hmm. And when he gets up in the morning, it's a regular alarm clock, and he doesn't look at his screen, any screens for 90 minutes after waking up. Wow. That's three hours. Can you imagine how much face-to-face -face time you could have with your sweetie? Yes. Yeah, and those two key times. Yeah. You know, check in your email or whatever. For me, mm -hmm. I'll speak to myself. Check an email or whatever. Yes. That's a lot of time, 90 minutes off of the screen of it a day. It used that to be is. TV. It, it used to be TV, TV anymore. No. It's computer. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So I thought that was really key. Like I said, I haven't incorporated it yet, but I, I'm very <laughs> conscious of it. Know where to find it. Yeah. Yes. And it, it's interesting because it's so, when we get into our email or even if people are sending messages on Facebook or whatever it is, it's so easy to say, oh, I'm going to respond to this one. And then 30 minutes later, you're still yeah. caught in responding. <laughs> Yeah, so it's, true. It's really What's really Facebook? True. <laughs> 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 These two are really laughing because they know I know Facebook all too well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so time, unfortunately, crazy. yeah, oh. I know we went out of time, and so many 
practical tips. I mean, we try to give our audience good tips every every week, and mm -hmm. uh, boy, we're just exploding with them. Hit we're going to make sure park, we Dr. Flowers. Yes, yes. definitely, definitely. Amanda, why don't you tell us where people can find you? Anything that projects that you've got coming up? Tell us about your radio shows. Anything that you want to share? Absolutely. Well, people can find me um, on look on Facebook. It's um, my web page is Dr. Amanda Flowers at Facebook.com, and you can find me there and find video snippets of um, some of my radio shows. I do. Um, I am the producer and host of Let's Talk About Health. Mm -hmm. And um, you can look on there and the, the website to get on there and watch the show. It's, it's live in Columbus, Ohio. You can listen to it, but you can also log on um, via email. I mean, via, um, you know, the website. And then I also have a couple of other blog talk radio shows I do through Black Satin Radio. Um, I do speaking engagements, so people can email me at uh, dr.amanda.flowers at gmail.com. And then also my, um, my webpage, dramandaflowers at wordpress.com. People can look up there and, and see um, different information that I'm doing, the types of speaking engagements I do and things like that. Terrific. Great, 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 great. Well, this has been such a pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you so very much. Yeah. Thank you. It's been a pleasure also. Yeah. yeah. Well, everyone, signing off for Mighty Married Moms, I am Debbie Owen from YouCanRaiseGreatKids.com. Linda Tai from AllWellBreaksLoose.com. And Wendy Williams from ConnectAgain.org. And we are thrilled that we can have Dr. Amanda Flowers with us today, and we look forward to um, speaking with you some more, audience, about uh, what we've picked up from this today. And please, we would love to have you leave us a rating and a review on iTunes and share this with your friends, because if you picked up anything valuable today, they're going to want to hear about it too. So thanks, everybody, and we will see you next time. Bye, Thank everyone. You. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Mighty Married Moms. Tune in twice a week on Mondays and Thursdays to meet fascinating and inspiring guests who will help you create the life you've always wanted. You can find these episodes and special gifts just for you at MightyMarriedMoms.com as well as a link to our Facebook community where we continue the conversation around the kitchen table. Please also help share the love by leaving a review on iTunes. We'll see you next time.